What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. So uh, yeah, simply by popular demand, we're gonna go ahead and pop this one out. <laughs> Let's get it. Hey y'all. Hey Niles. I'm ready for some action tonight. Yes sir. This is just the two of you guys. I imagine this campaign is gonna be a little bit more linear than usual. I'll see. Hello, my name's Niles Valentine. I'm 27 years old, and I was born and raised right here in Mobile, Alabama. I believe it. I mean, that accent cannot be replicated. Mobile, Alabama. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. Stop it. But hold up. I'm a little confused here. Yo, the barbers out here saving lives. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I'm really into role-playing and fantasy games because... You can do anything. You can make your own rules. You can play any character. Would you by chance know where Orc Cross 7 is? Why, yes, I do. One of the reasons I'm obsessed with gaming is because I love symbiosis. Is, is, that, is, that, is, that, a, is that a word that um people are going to mostly understand? Like, I don't know if that was like a slight jab at viewers. Like, oh man, people are really dumb these days. I don't think they know what symbiosis means. People are going to mostly understand. But I'll tell you what knows. You might be onto something, because <laughs> I had no clue what that word meant. Like, I haven't heard symbiosis since, like, 7th grade biology. And if you know my issues with 7th grade biology, you're an OG fan. Like, if you know what I'm talking about, I love you. Would you by chance know where Orc Cross 7 is? Why, yes, I do. But why do you need to know? 12. Okay, so they allow you into the city. Growing up, I always knew that I was different. Nothing wrong with being different, though. But I'll be honest, I think this whole board game, role playing, DLD, nerdy shit, I think it's dope as hell. <laughs> like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, I know a lot of people hate on kids like this, and it's like, bro, these are some of the most wholesome, genuine people you'll ever meet. Only ever complain going to these events where you know, they weren't always up to date with the deodorant technology. You know what I'm talking about? And if you're watching this video and you feel like, man, Sauce could be talking about me, like, like the shoe kind of fits my foot. I'm here to tell you not to worry. Your boy Sauce got you. I got the remedy. I got the sauce in this bottle right here. Yes, sir. Sam Bird, let's get it. Now, if you're new to the channel and you're thinking, man, what, what is Sam Bird? To keep it simple, Sam Bird is a fragrance subscription. Just like your Netflix, your Crunchyroll, your RuneScape account. You pay the small fee. You log onto the website. You check out the catalog, massive catalog, designer fragrances, indie fragrances, Versace, Gucci, Dolce Gabbana, all the good stuff. You pick the one you want, add it to the cart. Next thing you know, problem solved. You're smelling good. You're feeling good. Like you should. Like you should. Hey. Hey, feeling good. Like I should. Now this month, we got a game changer. This one right here. Yes, sir. I'm gonna pop it open for you guys. This one is Emily in Paris by Michelle Germon. Now this one in particular is inspired by Gabrielle from the famous Netflix series Emily in Paris. Let me just tell you the scent. I didn't even know what I was getting. I was just picking random stuff. But this one, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I love it. I love it. Now this scent has top notes of sophisticated cardamom, middle notes of French lavender, French sage, dark tonka beans, and bottom notes of sandalwood, French vanilla, and of course the mysterious oak moss. It's fresh, seductive, dreamy, very very light scent, easy to wear, great for the mornings, 5 out of 5 stars, easy. Now the fragrance comes in a nice package like this, and to use it you just swipe over and you're good to go. Now if you're looking for a more nighttime scent, I would highly recommend After Hours by Antica Farmachista. This is a more intense, bold fragrance to invoke your nightlife, reflected by their notes of black rose, cocoa, leather, and amber. And the best part is if you scan my QR code or use my code Sauceaholic55 off, you'll get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That makes it very affordable. And if you don't like it for any reason, cancellation is hassle free. Otherwise, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll get you situated. Now I've been doing a lot of traveling and Scentbird makes it so easy to just pack up one or two cents, drop it in a carry-on bag, and I'm pretty much good to go, right? Everything is TSA approved, so you're just gold. I want to give a big big shout out to December for sponsoring this video and showing us love. Don't forget to scan the QR code or use my code Sauceaholic55 off to get all your discounts. All the links are going to be in the description below. Thank you again December and without further ado, back to the video. I always knew that I was different. I had difficulty in school. It got to a point where they finally said, okay, let's see what, what what's going on here. And that's when we found out that I had autism spectrum disorder. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to describe if you're not autistic yourself. In most cases, it affects your ability to grasp social nuances. Anyone want it? Any? 
All right, I don't think autism should affect your cooking now. It's like, like them boys are burnt toast. Like this man made cancer chips and was like, y'all want some? Like, nah, <laughs> nah. Anyone want it? Any? Now, the one thing I'll say is having friends who are autistic, the one thing I notice is my jokes will literally fly over their heads. Like they'll take it literal. <laughs> so I can kind of understand what he means by inability to grasp social cues. Due to my autism, I have heightened senses. And I also smell pretty much everything, you know? I can smell the acrylic from the paint, the wax on the floor. That table is mahogany over there. That's a very distinct smell. I don't know, man. Being able to smell mahogany from a table that far away is kind of crazy, yeah? <laughs> is that not crazy? Or maybe I'm crazy. But no, I feel like that's got to be like a superpower, right? That table is mahogany over there. That is a superpower. I feel like if we had Brody on the last episode, he would have smelled that gonorrhea like a mile away. Which means I most likely have gonorrhea. And we would have been done with that cornball like seven episodes early. You are here. But anyway, so we find out that Niles here works as a peer advocate. I've always loved standing up for people just like myself, helping them become the best that they could be. Very wholesome stuff. And now he's planning to go to Ghana to see his longtime girlfriend, Matilda. Matilda is my girlfriend. She is 23 years old. She lives in Ghana. And we've been dating for the last two years. At first, I thought it was too good to be true because she's very beautiful. When she smiles, it's, it, 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 does, it does make you feel a type of way. More importantly, I explained to Matilda that I suffer from autism spectrum disorder, and she says that she accepts me for who I am. <laughs> my man said it loud and proud. <laughs> man, this dude's just naturally funny. So I told Matilda about my autism disorder, and guess what? She accepts me for who I am. What a... One more time for the non-believers. She accepts me for who I am. She accepts me for who I am. Hey, as you should, Niles. As you should. Now, my first initial thoughts were, oh, man, is this going to be another Tyree situation? You know, the dude who was talking to some imaginary girl for a couple years, get finessed for all his money? Because that's how slimy TLC is. Like, they'll find people like that, especially when they're this hopeful. She makes me feel that I'm someone worthy of having a marriage, of having a family, of having happiness. And, and you know... That's really all I have ever wanted. I am thinking about, you know, bringing her over here to America. Right now. Not <laughs> right this instant, but she wants to get married on this trip. Whoa, 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 whoa. hang on, guys. Oh yeah, that's a red flag. Yeah, that's real, they haven't even met yet. Nah, Matilda, you are smoking. Around five months ago, I, I proposed to Matilda over the phone. Oh, never mind, I take that back. Uh, Niles, you are smoking. It's your fault. <laughs> it is your fault. Like, I don't know if Ghana's like this, but I know in some cultures, some Asian cultures, once you get engaged and a family finds out, oh yeah, it's donezo. It's no longer a waiting game. It's a taking time bomb. <laughs> Like they're like you could be engaged for one day, wake up the next morning, and your whole family set to arrive in two weeks. You're like, what? <laughs> to my surprise, she has gone full steam ahead and is planning everything for a wedding during my trip to Ghana. And it's stressing me out. Why is she trying to rush the process of getting married so soon? Like why she don't wanna I just think that is a culture thing. She's getting pressure from out from outside. Hey. <laughs> What I say? <laughs> what I say? Once you get engaged and a family finds out, oh yeah, it's donezo. See, have I ever lied to you guys? Probably. <laughs> but today is not the day. Not today. Now, our buddy Niles here is starting to freak out. You know, he's feeling a bit overwhelmed. Like, he knows for a fact he doesn't want to get married on this trip. He just hasn't exactly communicated that correctly to Matilda. But he knows he probably should before the trip. Hi, Matilda. I'm door dashing right now, but I've got a moment to talk to you. I always have time to talk to you. Oh, my God. I miss you. And soon enough, we won't have to miss each other like I this. I can't wait to see you at the airport to hug my bay. I look forward to it. And I'm gonna treat you like a king because you are my king. And I'm gonna treat you like a queen. So you know what this means? We're gonna be royalty. Yo. Pause. The corniness is killing me. And they lather it up. They, they lather it up. I love you. And I love you more than you love me. No, no, no. I love you lie. more than you. I'm the one who love you more than you love wait, me. Wait, wait. I love you more. But hey, that's love sometimes. Sometimes it's gonna get corny. Wait, wait. I love you more. Now, the whole point of this phone call was for Niles to communicate to Matilda about how he really feels about the wedding rig. And he does communicate that. Just not very well. I want to tell my friends about our wedding, my neighbors. My mom's friends, my church members. We only do this once, right? We're only gonna have this one wedding. 
So you know what that means? We might need a little bit more time to plan that out. I want us to have our wedding at the end of your trip. Um, I hope you will not disappoint me. And he folds and kicks the can down the road. This is one of those conversations that is just, it's just better to have have it in person. Now he goes on to admit that the reason he's been hesitating is because he's afraid that if he tells her the truth, she's gonna want to end things. I'm worried that if I tell Matilda that we'd have to postpone the wedding, she'll just end things right here, right now. Now it's a bit too early to really tell if Matilda's playing our boy here or not, uh, but I'll say this, it seems like she knows how to get the wheels rolling. If she wants something from Niles, more likely than not, she's gonna get it. My name is Matilda. I'm 23 years of age. I'm from Offenso, Ghana. <laughs> right now, I don't have a good job. So I help my mom at the market. <laughs> Offenso is a boring place. I want to move from Offenso to US to start my future life thing. Damn. She didn't even try to hide it. She's like, yep, I want to be in America. That's my future life thing. Yeah. Now, a couple things we find out. Uh, yes, Niles is sending her money. <laughs> and yes, life is hard where she's from and her family's struggling. But right now, the market is no good. Sometimes now, you won't get even half of the money. So I'm worried for my family. I say that to say there is another legitimate reason, agenda, to love Niles other than loving Niles. That's a fact. But I can't villainize her for that, right? Because if I was put in a similar situation, like, yeah, I too would want a better situation. Before I get married, now I have to pay my bad price. My family will give me a list. Like, cut for the mom, cut for the dad, suitcase, schnapps, earrings, slippers, shoes, and money to seek for permission for the girl's parent. Now, TLC likes to twist this up as like a money-hungry family grab, but this ritual and ceremony is a common practice in a lot of cultures. That said, I'm more so curious how it's all gonna play out because Niles has informed us that he doesn't have money on tap like that. A wedding being an expense that I don't quite think I can afford right this instant. And usually, the groom will get some kind of help from their friends and family, but in this case, Niles is coming here by himself with zero support from his family. They don't support my relationship with Matilda. My family is most concerned concerned about me being taken advantage of, me being talked into something that I may not be able to get myself out of. Does it hurt you that they're not fully on board? What do you think? Damn! I would have liked for them to have been been here with me, to have supported me in this. I hate to say it, but I think the parents might be onto something. I don't think Matilda's conning this man or something, but he is getting talked into a wedding he doesn't want yet and secondly he's hiding this fact from matilda i couldn't bear to tell matilda that my parents didn't really support this um this relationship and look i'm not trying to rip you apart and but autism shouldn't stop you from being honest and i don't think you're being fully honest here buddy i hate holding back the truth from matilda but i really just don't want to hurt her like that's two strikes already of dishonesty for our buddy niles here like what else is this man dishonest about? Now up until now, I was pretty unsure how much Matilda actually likes this guy, like genuinely, but after a couple scenes, I, I don't know, man, she might actually really like this guy. We want God to bless this relationship, but to be honest, I don't know I can resist because this guy is so cute. <laughs> when I see Niles, I will run and hug him and I'm going to kiss him. I will say that, Daddy, Welcome to Ghana. Anyway, so he, he gets to Ghana. You know, this man comes out rocking race sweatpants. <laughs> like like a savage. And now don't don't even try to act like you don't you didn't know what you were doing. You knew what you were doing, bro. You knew what you were doing. But they end up meeting for the first time and I can't I can't lie, man. It was really cute. <laughs> So my man's on cloud nine at this point. He's elated. At this point, 
I'm sold. <laughs> I, I'm sold. I see it. She likes this man. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Like, if it comes out later that she was playing or conning this man for the green card or whatnot. Ah. Now, now, that's not even your fault. Like, she would have played my ass. Oh, I'm very happy. Daddy? Uh, hey. <laughs> you wouldn't take me to call you, daddy? <laughs> This is what happiness feels like. You see what I mean? Like, have that woman call any other straight man daddy like that? Daddy? Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's a wrap. Dunzo. Take the green card. <laughs> you can have it. It is yours. <laughs> Better yet, you can hold on to mine. But anyway, so the first thing they do is go out there with her brother, who's kind of there to, like, supervise and whatnot. And, hey, all I can say is for Matilda's sake, them gray sweatpants are working. Over time. I want now to have the best Ghanaian dishes. Because I want to pamper my man. <laughs> That's a snail? Mm-hmm. Pick it. Just, just, just eat it? Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> you know, coming from a guy who eats burnt bacon, I, I don't know if he really thought it was fantastic. It's fantastic. But anywho, so her brother was like, look, I came here with my sister to vet you out. You better treat her right. So I came with Matilda in Accra to meet you. You know, because I have to protect Matilda. She's my sister and I love her. You have to try to do your best and be a good husband. You understand? As far as I understand from my duties as a man, don't cheat, don't lie to her. Isn't that ironic, Niles? I feel like you might have already broken your cardinal rule. Don't lie to her. Because up until now, like, he's still trying to figure out, like, how do I tell Matilda I don't want to have this wedding right now? I want to say I have a plan, but I don't. And vice versa, this whole time, Matilda's looking at this man like a piece of meat. Like, there's food everywhere, but she wants that one. She was looking like a lioness who hasn't eaten in, like, four days. See, see Pumbaa crossing the street for the first time. And she almost got him, you know, skinned him alive and everything. Oh, my Almost, but no, but ultimately no. When push came to shove, somebody had to be responsible. So as first they hear, Matilda's giving him a breakdown of how the wedding's gonna go, and she's excited, and you would think now would be a good time to maybe start confessing some stuff, like it's now or never, Niles. <laughs> but no, he starts being afraid that he might be in too deep of doo-doo waters. There's a lot of people coming. It's, it's more than 200 people over there. You have to go, you, you have to come with your people and seek permission from my family. Interesting, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now Daniel Valentine is now my husband. Right? I think right. we're past the point of snowballing here. At this point, it's turning into an avalanche. The kind that swallows all, all of the skiers up and there's no survivors. I don't know. We, I just honestly don't know. I don't know how I'm going to navigate this. So his bright idea was to take her go shopping, you know, pamper her a little bit to maybe lessen the load before he tells her the truth, whenever that is. And mind you, they're closer to the airport than her village right now. Like, like this is more touristy area. And man, did this dude get fleeced. Maybe I can try this one also. Just understand that I may not be able to, to buy every single thing. Right now, Matilda may have a different idea of my money situation than, than what's actually the case. Babe. Hey. Wow. I love it. How much does this dress cost? Um, if you convert it, it will be $80. It'll be $80. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. $80. Hey, boy. Boy. Hell no. How we go from eight cents bananas to $80 skirts? That should have been a capital no. Uh, sorry, ma'am. I was unaware inflation travels at the speed of light here. <laughs> You're going to have to excuse me. Let's go, ahead and let's go ahead and ring it up. Thank you. Congo? Yes, we get him. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> You didn't even have to tell me the price for me to know he got fleeced. Like, look at all the cashiers. They just laughing it up. Even got the doorman laughing like, <laughs> got another one. Now he ends up dropping her off at the nail spa and decides to go off on his own. And I'm thinking like, wh where is this man going? I'll be back. Man, where are you going? I know, but don't worry. I have my GPS. Well, he went ring shopping. Kind of digging his own grave at this point. Looking at engagement rings. But he's hoping that when the truth comes out, this ring will help her understand that he plans on coming back. This was 234 after the discount. Hmm. The ring is is actually integral to what I want to do, so... I 
I would like to I, I would like to get this ring. So that's where the episode ends and all I can say is uh, I have a hard time feeling bad for the boy because he hasn't been honest. He hasn't been honest about his finance, uh, how he feels about the wedding, his family, and this all stems from his fear of losing out on love. And like we can't villainize Matilda because she doesn't know right like the only thing anybody can say is she knows how to operate the man like she knows how to get him to say yes. Ultimately I'm rooting for them. I hope it works out. I think they're cute but I'm siding with his parents. Like everything they warned him about happened. My family is most concerned about me being talked into something that I may not be able to get myself out of. Correct. Like if I had to make a guess, my bet is he continues on with the wedding because he couldn't dig himself out. But we'll see, man. We'll see. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below what you think. Also, don't forget to check out Sembird. All the links are going to be in the description below. Don't forget to use the QR code or my code Sauceaholic55 off to get your discount. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. But hey, what do you want to know? <laughs>